Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in a new chapter, which is chapter 3, Electrochemistry. There are three subtopics all together, which is 3.1 galvanic cell, 3.2 Nest equation, and 3.3 electrolytic cell. In 3.1, we're going to divide that into two parts, which is part 1 and part 2. But in this video, we're going to focus on part 1 first. So in this video, we're going to look into the definition of oxidation, reduction, and redox reaction. We're also going to learn how to draw a voltic or a galvanic cell, as well as to describe the operation of the voltic cell. We're also going to state the function of the salt bridge used in the voltic cell, and write the half cell as well as the overall cell reaction equation for the processes. Last but not least, we're going to write the cell notation for the galvanic cell. Okay, so without any further ado, let us start. Electrochemistry involves basically redox reaction. So redox reaction involves two steps, which is red refers to reductions and ox refers to oxidation. It means that reduction and oxidation happen simultaneously or happens at the same time. As mentioned, redox reaction can be divided into two, which is oxidation and reduction. For oxidation, it involves the addition of oxygen or the loses of hydrogen. However, in electrochemistry, we're going to focus on the third and fourth point more obviously because electrochemistry always involves the release of electron and the changing in oxidation number. So let's look at the example here. For oxidation, you're going to see that the zinc is going to be oxidized to form zinc 2 plus and 2 electron. So the 2 electron here is being released, which shows that oxidation happens and the oxidation will increase in the oxidation number where zinc from 0 become 2 plus and the oxidation happens at the anode and the way that you can remember that is to remember an ox se echo seladam means that oxidation happens at anode meanwhile for reduction it is the reverse for oxidation so in reduction uh, it involves the gaining of electron for example, copper 2 plus gain 2 electron in order to form copper solid. So the oxidation uh, number for the reduction processes will get reduced from positive 2 to become 0. And the reduction happens at cathode, where you can remember as red cat, kucing merah. Red refer to reduction and cat refer to happens at cathode. Alright? So, before we go any further, let's come back to what it's meant by electrochemistry. So electro means electric, meanwhile chemistry means chemical reaction. So electrochemistry is basically a study of relationship between electricity and chemical reaction. Hence, in electrochemistry, we're going to look into two types of cell, which is galvanic cell and electrolytic cell. Galvanic cell, we will learn in the subtopic of 3.1. And electrolytic cell we will learn in 3.3. However, I think it is important for us to compare and contrast between the two types of cell at the beginning of the chapter. So let's, let's look at that. So for galvanic cell, it involves the changing in chemical energy into electrical energy because, as mentioned, the chemical here will, will involve process of oxidation at anode and reduction at cathode okay so at anode for example zinc gonna be oxidized to form zinc 2 plus and 2 electron so the electron that is being produced here will be passing through a copper wire and this will produce an electricity and hence you can see that a galvanic or voltic cell converts chemical because it's starting up with a chemical to electrical energy and as what you can see here, the anode is the part where it releases electron. So the anode, because it becomes the source of electron, it will become the negative electron. Okay, and this is a spontaneous redox reaction because it releases energy in the form of electrical, where from chemical it becomes electrical. And the energy is can be detected by the changing in the voltmeter. From here, to become there because energy is uh, increasing. However, 
for electrolytic cell, it is a non-spontaneous redox reaction. It means that it requires energy to drive it. So in here, you see that energy that is being needed is in the form of battery. So you need to plug in battery in the electrolytic cell so that it can convert electrical energy uh, to chemical energy. And because uh, it requires energy from outside, from external, so the electrode will depend on the uh, charge of the battery. For example, here represent and not of the battery, so hence the electrode will become and not here. So it's going to be a positive and not. Meanwhile, cathode here is negative of the battery, and the electrode here will become negative, which is also representing a cathode. So you can see the differences between them. Okay. However, despite the differences, there are also some similarities. The first similarities is oxidation will still occur at anode and reduction will still occur at cathode. Yang mana tadi, oxidation tu, kita ingat adalah an ox, seekor seladang. Anode, uh, oxidation will always happen at anode, and reduction, red cat, will always happen at cathode. And for the electron flow, um, it always occurs from anode to cathode. Same goes to here, from anode into cathode. Alright, so that are the differences between them. To draw the voltage cell, first, we're going to have two beaker containing the electrolyte of 1 molar of zinc sulfate and 0 0.5 molar of copper sulfate solution. In this, in this electrolyte, there are going to be two electrodes, which is zinc electrode and copper electrode respectively. These two electrodes will then be connected by a copper wire and this is going to be attached with a voltmeter. And in order to complete the circuit, we need a salt bridge. Alright, so as the reaction goes by and the electron is released from N0 to cathode, you can see that there is a movement of electron here. Okay, from N0 to cathode. And this causes um, the voltmeter reading going from 0 into 2 volt, for example. Okay, and the salt bridge here. Um, is basically an inverted U-tube containing a gel permeated solution which contains a salt of, for example, K plus and Cl minus. So, the function of salt feature is to complete the circuit, number one, and second is to maintain electrical neutrality by allowing the ions to move in between the electrolyte. So, when there is no salt bridge present here, you will see that there will be an excess build up of charges in both of the electrolyte. So when there's uh, excess build up of charges, the reaction will stop. So we need to help the salt bridge in order to neutralize the excess charges. Alright? So now we're going to look into the operation of the voltage cell. Okay? So this is the similar setup as I shown uh, just now, but now in the diagram form. Okay? So, um, zinc is basically more electropositive than copper, which is zinc, ele zinc electrode and copper electrode. So, as what you have learned in the high school, you know that zinc is much, much more electropositive than copper here. So, zinc is going to act as a anode. So, zinc will undergo oxidation and releases electron to form zinc 2 plus. Okay? And oxidation number of zinc will increase from zero into plus 2. Hence, you can say that zinc will release this electron and because it provides electron which is a negative charge, the anode here will carry a negative terminal. Okay, and um, as the observation, you can see that the zinc electrode here will start to get thin or start to dissolve as the reaction goes by. So it gets thinner and thinner and thinner as the time goes by. However, on the cathode side, um, the electron that were produced by the zinc just now will be accepted by the copper. Alright? So, the, inside the solution here, they're going to be copper 2 plus. Okay? So, copper electrode will acting as the cathode. So, the copper 2 plus in the copper sulfate solution will undergo reduction by accepting the electrodes that were transferred 
example, two mole of electron in order to form copper atom. All right. So you can say that the oxidation number of copper from plus two will drop to zero. And because it, it accepts the electron, the copper is going to be the positive terminal. Okay. Meanwhile, zinc just now, which acts as a source of electron, is going to be the negative terminal. Okay, and due to the reduction, you can see that copper solid is being formed here. So you can say that reddish brown solid is deposited. Okay, now we're going to do the half cell and overall cell reaction of a voltaic cell. So at anode, just now you have seen that um, the half cell reaction is going to be the oxidation of zinc, where zinc solid oxidizes to form zinc 2 plus and produces 2 mole of electron. Meanwhile, at, at cathode, copper 2 plus will accept the electron in order to form copper solid. So, this is another half cell reaction at anode and cathode. Alright, so in order to produce the overall cell reaction, we can cancel out the two electron here and two electron here, and we add up the uh, equation. So, we're going to get zinc solid plus copper 2 plus aqueous produces zinc 2 plus aqueous and copper solid. Right, so now we're gonna look into how to write the cell notation. So for the cell notation, we need some info in order to write that. Okay. So we have the zinc electrode, and then we also have the zinc nitrate, copper electrode, and copper sulfate solution, which is 0.1 molar that we use. Let's say, and at the reaction at anode. Um, happens from zinc solid into zinc 2 plus aqueous and at cathode it's gonna be from copper 2 plus aqueous accepting two electron to form copper solid. So in order to write the cell notation we're gonna start with zinc solid here produces zinc 2 plus with a slash zinc 2 plus at the concentration of one molar and aqueous representing the state of the ions here. So here representing a phase boundary. Alright? And these two lines here representing a salt bridge. Okay? And this is the reaction at cathode, salt bridge, and uh, at anode, salt bridge. And now, and now we're going to look at the reaction at cathode here. Okay? So at cathode, copper 2 plus 0. Sorry, this one is 0. 0.5 molar of aqueous here will be forming copper solid okay so this one representing this the changes in phase in solid here okay so um, this slanted line here representing a phase boundary here representing a salt bridge and here representing a reaction at anode and here representing the reaction at cathode Meanwhile, the middle here representing the bridge. And hence, we can say that for the cell notation, we can use the A, B, C rule. Alright? So, ensure that you include the concentration and also the phase of the ions. Okay? So, let's say if you have other electrode rather than the same electrode as in the solution, for example, platinum, you need to include the platinum at the start and let's say your cathode is also a platinum you also have to include the electrode here which is platinum but in this case because the electrode and the electrolyte are in the same uh, are in the same species so you don't have to write the um, uh, the electrode here all right So now let's do another example. So let's say now you're having zinc uh, electrode and the chromium electrode here. So in order to determine which one going to be an anode and cathode, usually you're going to look into the electrochemical series here. So as what you can see here, zinc is more electropositive than chromium, where chromium will be here, but the data is not included. Okay, chromium going to be below zinc. So you know that zinc is more electropositive. Okay, this 
table is what you have learned in high school. However, at this level, we will be using the um, electro, the standard reduction potential table here, where this will be given in exam. And we will learn more about this table in the next video, which is in the video of 3.1 part 2. Okay, from this table, you can see that zinc has a negative 0 0.76. However, chromium have a value of negative 0 0.74. Okay, so from this table, as what you have that you will learn in part two of the video, the one that will have that will have a more positive value, which is negative 0 0.74, will be at the cathode. Okay. So here going to be the cathode. Meanwhile, zinc here going to be the anode. All right. So this one going to be a new knowledge for you. And we're going to look into that in the next video. Okay. So our anode going to be zinc. And our cathode going to be chromium solid. Okay. So if we were to write the half equation. So oxidation going to happen at anode, right? So zinc gonna uh, oxidize to form zinc 2 plus and releases two electrons here meanwhile ox reduction happening at cathode will receive cr3 plus will receive three electrons in order to form chromium solid okay and in order to form overall cell reaction we need to ensure that our number of electrons is the same so that we can cancel it out okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to multiply the equation by 3 and multiply this equation by 2 so that we can get 6 electron and 6 electron here and we can cancel that out. So um, once I did that, we can cancel out this one and cancel out this one. And the overall cell reaction is going to be freezing solid plus at the reactant side 2Cr3 plus aqueous. Uh, going into product of 3 zinc 2 plus plus 2 chromium solid. Alright, so the phase here need to be included. Alright, and for the cell notation, um, as I mentioned, we need to go from A, B, and C. So at N0, zinc going to zinc 2 plus at the concentration of 0 0.2 molar. And they're going to be a bridge, which is here. And the cathode is a reduction process from the CR3 plus going into CR solid. Okay? And you don't have to include the number here. Okay? So the number is not needed in the cell notation. Okay? No need to include the numbers or the stoichiometry here. Alright, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!